Hi, I'm Dr. Max, and we're here in Hair by Dr. Max Restoration Center in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And I will continue the same series uh, where we discuss uh, different cases which involve hair restoration, either robotic, uh, manual, or non-surgical. And maybe one of those cases will be similar to you, and um, you can see what the thought process, how we decide what the best options to treat hair loss and how to proceed in general. And today we have a pretty unique situation. Our patient is uh, very young, is 22 years old. And it's the biggest dilemma among uh, doctors um, in the hair restoration community, what the minimal age that we can take patient for hair restoration. And there are a lot of doctors, a lot of opinions. Uh, my personal view is, um, what is the most important is how patient feel. It, it does cause a lot of, a lot of psychological uh, uh, problems, a lot of insecurity, uh, potential depression that can uh, result in uh, reducing quality of life, uh, having problems at work in relationship. I think it's more important to address those issues um, by uh, uh, surgical or non-surgical methods and uh, restore this patient confidence. So uh, the age is less relevant to me, but what is important is how to approach. Because uh, each patient is different. Even at 22 years old, uh, presentation of each patient will vary how progressive is the hair loss, how far, how well defined is the hair loss. So let's say in a situation where we have very minimal uh, hair loss um, in the anterior part of the head and there is no way to predict how fast it will progress, how far the hair loss will, um, will extend over time, I tend to wait and say, okay, let's wait a few years and then we'll make this determination. When we have a patient with well-defined and established hair loss and he is, again, suffering a lot emotionally, I think it is our obligation as a physician, a hair transplant surgeon, is to address uh, his concerns. Most of the time it's a male patient, of course, uh, that's why I said he's. Um, and that was the situation today. And um, uh, so um, the way we start, I always discuss how we design the hairline. The hairline needs to be very conservative. That means that we will not go and create a very low hairline like it was in, uh, uh, back in when the patient was 16 years old. But we need to see what's gonna happen in the future. So one of the things I always discuss is that we have to create a conservative hairline that will be uh, relevant when the patient is 30 years old, 40 years old, or 50 years old because this hairline is considered to be permanent. It's not something that will change over time. The next uh, thing is how to uh, harvest hair properly. It is super important for uh, when we take young patients is to harvest only from what they consider to be a safe zone. Safe zone that will have less likelihood to be affected by hair loss. And we're talking about occipital part, the back of the head, less likely to be affected in the uh, years to come. And the hair that we take from there will not be affected by hair loss in the future. And that's exactly what we need today. I create a hairline that uh, will suit the patient uh, facial features, again, with a more conservative approach. So today we started with the harvesting from the safe zone uh, of the occipital part. I always uh, spread the entire harvesting over the entire donor area. So we plant 2,000 grafts and I utilize the entire safe zone of the temporal uh, occipital um, uh, parts. Um, we process those grafts as quickly as possible and we um, start to uh, implant right after the short break. Uh, harvesting it was done with uh, using RTAS in the occipital part. I used the manual harvesting device Trivalini to harvest from both uh, temporal areas on both sides. Implantation, as, you, as always, is done only by me. I'm using sharp implanters 
with the special uh, technique to uh, increase uh, density in the frontal areas. We were able to finish the implantation of 2,000 grafts just uh, a little bit over two hours. This is a great speed. As always, importance is how fast we can uh, uh, implant graft back into the oxygenated environment. And that's what seemed to make a big difference because there is less trauma, less stress to those grafts, the quicker they will recover. And we've seen more and more grafts actually continue to grow. They don't shed like usually, but they continue to grow like nothing happened. And that's what certainly we'll, we'll uh, hope to see in, in today's patients. With any questions regarding your particular uh, uh, type of hair loss and what to do about it, please don't hesitate to call us, uh, email us. We are very responsive. We try to respond as quickly as possible. Uh, please visit our website at bringbackhair.com. There's plenty of useful information and uh, a lot of articles and patient testimonials, uh, just a general information about uh, procedures or type of hair loss that people experience and uh, that you can get uh, educated about. And uh, uh, you can schedule your confidential um, uh, consultation with our hair uh, transplant consultant or with me uh, at 954-945-909.